Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite YouTuber who just needs to apologize, Gardner, the Linux gamer. So, a bunch of people sent me this article over on Twitter, and uh, I thought it was pretty interesting and relevant to the conversation that we like to have here on the channel every once in a while about Linux gaming. You know, that one thing. Um, the article is called, Linux Gaming is on a Life Support System Called Steam. The subtitle, Valve's video game marketplace has the power to keep Linux alive. Well, I don't know if it has the power to keep Linux alive. I think Linux is doing just fine as it is. Um, but I wanted to talk about some of the points that were actually made in this article because I thought that they were really interesting. And, um, uh, eh, well, let's see. Well, let's just jump into this. So the article basically posits that uh, Linux has been kept alive as a special interest project by Gabe and company. And uh, certainly I think that there are, that's a conclusion that many outside the Linux world uh, would be tempted to, to arrive at, right? Moreover, the article goes on to say that, uh, you know, with the advent of the Epic Store uh, and the fact that the Epic Store has chosen to ignore Linux uh, gaming, um, it shows uh, just how niche and unnecessary Linux support really is in the PC gaming space. To quote the article, one of the only reasons Linux is even a conversation nowadays is because Steam has kept its embers warm all these years. But I'm left asking, is that correct? I mean, is Linux gaming really only a conversation today because Steam is a thing and has been putting resources into making it a thing? Um, I've been a Linux user uh, since the mid-2000s, and I really dove in headfirst when I started uh, using Linux. Uh, I abandoned PC games altogether. I never really was much of a PC gamer to begin with. Uh, but I did so, uh, in, in a, to live a more ethical, uh, computing lifestyle, you know, uh, the old, the old, uh, song and dance about Linux and ethics and yada, yada, yada. With the rarest of exceptions, I haven't really looked back either. Um, I started playing Linux games right off the bat. I mean, I was playing like Unreal Tournament 2004 and, and Doom 3 and, you know, granted there weren't a whole lot of big name titles back then, but I, I definitely played what was available, you know? So it's, it's safe to say that Linux gaming existed in some capacity before Steam, right? Like that's, there were definitely games available uh, before Steam came out. And when David D. Taylor ported Doom to Linux in 1994, he specifically stated that uh, he did so because Linux gave him a woody. And he also mentioned in that same statement that uh, Linux didn't generate any revenue for id whatsoever. He just did it because he loved Linux. The pro of supporting Linux is the community. Super Meat Boy Forever creator Tommy Refinus said, In my experience, Linux gamers tend to be the most appreciative gamers out there. The con here, unfortunately, is that the Linux gaming community is a very, very small portion of the PC gaming market. I would agree with Tommy. I would say that uh, we are some of the most awesome uh, gamers that I've ever met. You know, the, the, the small portion of you guys that I've met, I, I can say with certainty that, that we're a, a, an awesome and tight-knit community. Um, but according to Tommy Refinus, uh, the amount of money that was actually earned by Super Meat Boy on Linux was eclipsed even by the, uh, what, what do you say? By the interest they've accrued in their bank accounts. So they made, according to Tommy Refinus, they made more money from the interest in the Super Meat Boy bank account than they actually made by selling copies of the Linux version of Super Meat Boy. I'm a bit skeptical of that statement, but I can see how it might be true, all right? Um, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt for sure, because, you know, I don't think that uh, people are out there lying just to 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 slight Linux. I don't think that's the case at all. I think that, you know, the way that Super Meat Boy was sold with Linux support through the Humble Bundle and through, you know, Steam Play, it, it could be true that, that the Linux version didn't make a whole lot of money. So there are many instances of developers who have ported their game to Linux who go on to say that it didn't. Uh, actually recoup the cost uh, by selling the game. Um, and I can see that that might be the case. 
the benefits of creating a Linux version are extremely low monetarily. So the upfront costs have to be as minuscule as possible. That's exactly what Steam is doing with Proton, making the Linux porting process as simple as possible. So yeah, I would agree with that. I think that whatever any company can do to make porting games to Linux uh, more transparent for the developers doing the porting, if you will even call it that, um, I think that that uh, is a good thing to have happen. I, that's why I'm a big supporter of Proton and the whole uh, Steam Play initiative that they've engaged in. So yeah, Proton was launched in October, right? And it made Windows-only games accessible to a hungry crowd of Linux gamers. That's not to say they didn't have access to it because Proton is based on Wine and uh, Wine was available. Uh, you could install Steam through Wine and blah, blah, blah. I never did that. It, that was not... Uh, the way I wanted to play games on Linux. Uh, the difference here is that Proton makes games available uh, for you to play through the native Linux Steam client, right? Uh, the fact that that's available to, to do also demonstrates to the game's publishers that there are people who want to play their games on Linux, right? Game developers have all kinds of metrics that they that are gathered about the people who are playing the games on uh, whatever platform, whatever hardware they have. The developers get to see that information and make decisions about what games uh, are going to be, uh, what platforms can be supported, what kind of controllers need to be supported and all that stuff. So the fact is that Proton has made porting games to Linux, porting, I, I'll put that in quotes, porting games to Linux, uh, transparent so that companies really don't have to do much if anything to actually get their games uh on the linux platform the overall percentage still has a lot of ground to make up but the number of linux gamers on steam continues to grow at a similar rate as those playing on windows steam developer pierre lou graffat told engadget pierre i'm really bad at names i'm sorry please forgive me it looks like there might actually be an increased trend in linux gamers starting from october when we released the new steam play or proton beta but it's too early to tell if that will have a real lasting impact to be honest that is refreshing to hear directly from the notoriously mute and incommunicative valve uh you know pierre i follow him on twitter he's he's a great guy and uh he's actually super uh He's pretty open for someone that works at Valve. And so it's nice to see him in this article too. And, you know, as our uh, con community continues to grow, we become more visible, but also more viable as an audience to be catered to, right? Uh, the fact is there are something, I, I'm really bad with numbers, but I believe I did the math the other day and there could be as many as like 3 million or 2 million users on Steam that are playing on Linux. Um, I, I covered it in a podcast recently. If you haven't subscribed, go subscribe at optopical.net. And sure, sure, Valve and Steam and Proton have had an enormous impact on the Linux gaming landscape, one that arguably no other company can be compared to. But I think that's kind of where we're running into the issue. I think this is the real crux of the argument uh, of the uh, the article, right? Whether it's the onslaught of trash on Steam or the uh, or the Steam discovery bug that still is plaguing the platform reportedly to this day, or the archaic revenue split between developers and Steam, uh, Valve really have rolled out the red carpet to uh, allow any competitor to charge their gates. You know what I'm saying? They haven't done enough to build a good relationship with developers. And it's really taken a toll on their storefront, I think. Proton works best with games that have Vulkan support, right? Games that use Vulkan have just an inherent cross-platform uh, advantage than uh, something like DirectX would have. The fact is, games like uh, Doom Eternal, which use the Vulkan API, are probably not going to be available on Steam, which means we won't be able to take advantage of Steam Play with doom eternal and the it's also true for games like metro exodus which uh, are exclusive to the epic store at least for the first year um so valve have built tools to allow game developers to publish their games for linux transparently yet many developers are leaving steam for other platforms to begin with so 
See, I'm not willing to say that Linux gaming is on a life support system called Valve, right? I can't say that because Linux gaming existed well before Steam came around. And I think that it would continue to exist without Steam. And I'm not, I'm not going to say that Valve hasn't had an impact on Linux gaming. And arguably, they have been one of the most, if not the most, influential um, companies in the world to have an impact on Linux gaming. But I am worried about the health of the Steam store. The Steam store, uh, I don't know if they're necessarily equipped to compete with Epic uh, or any of the competitors who haven't embraced Linux like Valve have. So I guess you could say that I'm more worried about Steam being the thing that needs life support. But I want to know what you guys think about this article, about anything going on in the Linux world. Let me know in the comments down below. If you believe in the work that I do, you can support the show with a monthly contribution over on Patreon, or you can pick up a t-shirt. There's a link in the description. But no matter what you do, whether you hit that like button or share this video with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me, the Linux Gamer. And as always, thanks for watching.